Good morning. It's wonderful to study God's word in depth and already in previous weeks, much has been gleaned from one verse of a very familiar passage from Matthew's gospel, the Beatitudes, or as Billy Graham preferred to call them, the beautiful attitudes. As I seek to delve into the sixth verse of Matthew 5, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. I do so in the context of chapters 5 and 6 as a complete picture and suggest when you have chance to do it, you might read the two chapters through as a whole. Righteousness. What an amazing word. In Papua New Guinea where they have a number of different languages, they also speak Pidgin English. They translate righteousness in this way. Im say I'm all right. Im say I'm all right. How amazing is that? Him, God himself, says that despite my failings and sins, because of Jesus... I'm saved from those things that would naturally condemn me. The verse we're looking at today reminds us very strongly that we cannot be complacent about that. Although by God's grace we are forgiven, we're still not perfect and we need to strive to become more and more like Jesus. And we should do that with a sense of passion and urgency. We hunger and thirst. Of course we can obey the rules, we can pray, we can read the Bible and attend church, although obviously not at the minute, only in this way. We can live good moral lives, but Jesus asks more of us. If we hunger and thirst for righteousness, which cannot be earned by good lives or religiosity, then God, because of the death of Jesus and his resurrection, will fill us with his spirit to strengthen us on our journey of faith. I can remember as a young child, many years ago, of course, being told by my parents not to say, I'm starving, when I was just hungry. I also was told I could not say I'm dying for a drink when I was just thirsty. I was taught that in comparison to many people in the world who actually did know that experience and did know what it was like to be starving and dying of thirst, it was not fair of me to say those words. In previous weeks on this passage of scripture, it's been indicated that Jesus is addressing spiritual needs rather than any physical need. Sometimes spiritually we are starving. Sometimes we're more about religion than relationship. Yet sometimes we can identify with the words from Psalm 42, 1 and 2. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? The chorus that we associate with that. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. It so is like that verse from Matthew that we're looking at. And as we read through the Beatitudes, there is a real deep need, a real deep longing of a relationship with Jesus. And we see that in context, as I said before, as we look at Matthew 5 and 6. Jesus often condemned those who were satisfied with their religiosity, particularly those who were the religious leaders of the day, the self-righteous. Penny read from 
uh, chapter 6, verses 5 to 14, which I think helps to put into context the verse that we're particularly considering this morning. I've been blessed by Catherine Jenkins singing Blinded by Your Grace. Although I have to say there are a couple of lines that I don't completely feel comfortable with. Blinded, another physical word with a deeper spiritual meaning. The passion and the longing in that song, I think, resonates with our verse from the Beatitudes today. I personally identify with these words from that song. Lord, I've been broken. Although I'm not worthy, you fixed me. Now I'm blinded by your grace. Lord, may we be blinded by your grace, which makes us right in your sight, despite our faults and failings. Because of Jesus, help us to hunger and thirst in our relationship with you. Amen.